the worst property market in decades. Let's have a look. Good evening, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got a stein of ice cold water today because it's bloody hot in Brisbane right now. <laughs> but hip, you know, summer's coming again. Summer is coming again. So you may notice the fan in the background for more of my videos. I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with it, guys. You know, air conditioning is a luxury architects cannot afford. And don't think it's got anything to do with the environment. I would be blaring it on if I had it. So. Let's have a look. This is from the Sydney Morning Herald and a viewer sent this through to me because he thought I would find it interesting. And he was right. About as bad as it can get, REA boss grapples with the worst market for property in decades. So, I mean, just think about this. Everything else we're hearing in the media that it's, you know, it's taking off, it's going good. And then, you know, we're hearing different things from the REA and different things from Domain and, and CoreLogic. It's just all over the place, isn't it? We're getting mixed messages. So we've got to filter through it all. We've got to filter through it all and be very skeptical, I think. REA Group Chief Executive Owen Wilson has blamed the banking regulator and state government for intervening in the property boom and causing the most difficult market for real estate sales in decades. Okay, for intervening in the property boom. Now, I'll bring up a chart here to show everyone. And this is showing you, well, just the easing off of the property boom. The black line is the proportion, the percentage share of building approvals for foreign investors. Okay, our property boom, look at that huge line going up there. A lot of it was foreign investment. And the states love property because they charge you that nice, juicy stamp duty. That stamp duty to stamp that page. So, the News Corp controlled property listing portal's first quarter trading update on Friday revealed a 9% decline in revenue after broker commissions fell 202.3 million and a 14% falls in earnings before interest, tax depreciation, and amortization to 114.9 million. A 9% decline. So, well, what does that tell us, at least over the previous period, the first quarter? On an underlying basis revenue declining 6%, while earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization fell 9%. It's about as bad as it can get. It's the worst market we've ever seen, Mr. Wilson said. National listings fell 15% over the three months to September 30, with a 22% drop in Sydney and a 21% decline in Melbourne. Okay, let's just look at these numbers. They've dropped, listings have dropped. Over the three months to September, 22% in Sydney and 21% in Melbourne. Now, we've been discussing the auction clearance rates and they've been discussing how they've been going up and up and up. Now I've done videos, you know, even one earlier today, a few days ago, and I'll link to those. I'm just writing down the time here about the auction clearance rates and how due to the delayed reporting and the nature of the people or the methodology and how it's dependent on people reporting data, that there will be a bias to the negative, or at least I imagine there would be in a, shall we say, slower market. But we also have to realize that a decline in product will also affect this. If you've got less product on there, you know, the, it requires less auctions to hit a higher percentage. So that's another thing to consider, guys, when we're reading all this stuff. We need to bring this all together and just you know have it in the back of our mind when we're presented with some information. And this is where the... the you know, particularly the younger people who are getting pressured with the FOMO, with the fear of miss missing out, or missing out, missing out. The fear of missing out, you know, oh, I need to get into a property. The news is telling me this. I'm seeing this. You know, now's the time to buy. It's going up. You know, take it slow. It can't hurt. It can't hurt. What's the worst that could happen? It goes up a little bit more. You have to pay a bit more. It goes down. You pay a bit less. Rather than making a rash emotional decision. So... That quarter, 
the fact that residential and develop uh, sorry residential and development and mortgages declined to have that kind of a perfect storm we haven't seen that within 30 years he said rea's share price dropped 2.8 percent to 103 dollars 72 by 10.29 on friday well we haven't had a recession in 30 years have we the last recession we had was 28 years ago maybe we're starting to head towards that however mr wilson said that to have kept revenue relatively stable in the current environment was a good outcome that met the expectations of most analysts this was a manufactured downturn he said a manufactured downturn a manufactured downturn okay okay i'll bite let's see why it was a manufactured downturn aria group which is a major owner of sorry which is majority owned by news corp laid off 60 staff as part of a restructuring in september the fall in profits for the portal comes as building materials company borrel also took a hit due to the fir to the weak first quarter but property prices have started to recover to their fastest growth growth pace since the boom time period of 2015. okay but is that from the rea data or is that from the core logic data okay and this okay this is written today <laughs> i'm just checking i'm thinking of oh, what are they so i mean there you go that's one position apra the australian australian prudential regulation authority looked at the housing market and decided it was getting too hot they brought in lending restrictions on interest only loans investor loans foreign borrowers mr wilson said adding that state governments had also uh, slugged foreign borrowers with heavy higher stamp duty okay that's because we had over 90 percent of approved investment in new housing as share of over sorry 90 percent of building approvals were for foreign investment in 1415 over 90 percent look at that spike there how can you not say that is overheating okay that's why that's why that has flow on effects to the rest of the economy they're right it was overheating maybe they should have eased off on it at a slower pace implemented restrictions over time but also i think the effects of the global economy are coming into play as well so he also pointed to the impact of the banking royal commission as having spooked lenders into changing their practices and drastically reducing how much they would lend and the uncertainty of an election as affecting the market well yes it did most of those things are now unwound he said all that uncertainty has gone really there's still uncertainty on the global scale he said the businesses was see the business was seeing a lot of green shoots with buyer activity up by more than 30 percent over october compared to the year before and the company's mortgage broker business also up for the first time in a year well i'm we've had three drastic interest rate cuts and we've had you know tax deductions which i'd imagine might have made a difference hopefully the buyers are absolutely back mr wilson said we've clearly bottomed on house prices after four months in a row of increasing house prices in he did not expect to see a major recovery ahead of christmas but said he was pretty confident that there would be some positive signs in the new year positive signs in the new year i think it all comes down to overseas news to be honest i think if the us and china get a good trade deal that has some benefits that that screams a bit more confidence and then that will flow through to us in october listings declined 15 percent in sydney and 17 percent in melbourne rea group is forecasting lower listings for the first half of 2019 20 sorry 2020 financial year compared to the same period in 2019 with revenues to be skewed towards the second half of this year so guys what do you think what do you think their concerns are that it's a manufactured do you think it's a manufactured slowdown 
or just the fact that I mean this it, it, am I the only one concerned with this level of overheating in the sector I mean this is the this is the thing sure you can have um, this level of foreign investment but you have to understand it has flow-on effects flow-on effects the rest of your citizens the rest of your civilization to the cost of housing for another generation and what are they what are they spending you know fiat money make it make them buy Australian gold then use that to purchase the property we'll see if that happens let me know what you think guys do you think it was a manufactured bust or do you think it's just the natural cycle coming to a head let me know what you think in the comments like share and subscribe and if you like my content and would like to help me produce more I do have a patreon and a subscribe star where you can give a small donation also have affiliate links and PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great night, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye for now.